Hello and welcome to our Dad Stamps podcast. One year ago today I started my first podcast. So on this first anniversary I thought I would show you around my little my little den and let you see how my stamping world works. So as you can see on the left hand side I've got all my albums and stock cards and stuff ready to sort through. And my other passion, playing saxophone, which I do in my spare time when I'm not stamping. And then over this side, we've got the computer and all the paraphernalia I need to uh, post the stamps that I've sold. I bought myself a 32 inch screen so that I can see the images much clearer. And I've also got myself a very comfortable chair because I spend a lot of time sitting in it, obviously. So, back to this side then, and this little section here is all my collection. The rest is stuff for sale. So, this is seven albums of multi stamps, and as you can see, I've got one album for Queen Victoria and Edward VII. One album for George V, one for George VI, three for Queen Elizabeth II, and that's only up to uh, 1971 before decimalisation. And then this album is the 1965 definitive set, complete with all its errors and mistakes. I do want to get these three matching those four um, albums at some point but at the moment I can only find them for sale in the UK and with postage costs and import duty it's not economically viable to get any more yet. This last album is what's left of my Great Britain collection and it is just Queen Victoria Great Britain. Um, I decided to keep the Queen Victoria ones because I find this the most interesting part of stamp collecting uh, but all the other uh, British stamps I have now sold or I'm intending, intending to, stand, to sell. So the rest of these stamps, the rest of these albums are full of stamps that I need to sort to sell. Okay, On this side, this is where my British stamps used to be and all that's left of them is these two Windsor albums, which are very full and do contain some quite nice stuff. Um, but I will probably end up breaking this down and selling them individually to get better prices for them. And then these three albums are omnibus editions. There is uh, George the Sixth coronation sets, mint and used. There is the victory sets. There's uh, Queen Elizabeth the Second coronation, and in this album is all Queen Elizabeth the Second commemoratives in blocks of quarter blocks of four, and it is complete. So again, this is something I don't want to break up. Um, but I would probably look to sell it in the near future. So Pete, can I ask a question? You've obviously got some blank albums here where you have put information on the spine yourself, but there again here with the Windsor albums, that album has already been printed with the yep. crown, etc. So how do you find the albums do you go to one particular supplier for albums or do are there lots of different album supplies particularly well, they, for people starting out on their journey of stamp collecting yeah to be honest these have come all over the place the two Windsor albums I bought this complete um, and have added to it over over the years and they are specialist albums made by Stanley Gibbons with a space for every single English uh, stamp in them. So something like the Windsor album, it's a specially printed album with particular pages for you to feel 
the whole collection. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can we talk about the price then? So if we talk about these plain albums where you've actually done the lettering yourself, what would be the average cost of one of these albums? These, these are what they call spring back albums. They're, they're loose pages inside um, and if you fold the cover back open, it you can take the pages out and arrange them any way you want. These, I forget the price when I paid when I bought them, they're round about thirty, thirty-five pounds. Including the pages? Including fifty pages, I think it is. It may be twenty-five, I can't remember. Um these are slightly you, you can get cheaper ones than these. Um I these were more expensive because they have black pages in them, which tend to cost more for some reason or another. Um but there are cheaper ones. The other type of album you can get is like this, which is called a stock album, where the stamps just slide into um, spaces. These are a lot cheaper. You can pick these up for anything from 10 to 20 pounds. And they would just come already with a set number of pages. Yeah. You, you can, can't remove the you pages. You can buy them like this, which are eight pages. Or up to 64 pages, um, no, 32 pages, 64 sides. So they're various odd, odd sizes. And all of these I've picked up, some I've bought in England, some I've bought in Spain, some I've bought when I'm collecting, uh, when I'm buying a collection. So they've all come from various odd places, hence the different colors and the different styles. These ones up here, um, as you can see, labelled letters of the alphabet. These are how I started sorting um, collections I buy. So these are just by country. So for example, here we've got Malawi. Moving on, we've got Mauritius. And more Mauritius. And then Morocco agencies, etc, etc. And these are just where I store all the stuff that I'm not ready to sell. I maybe wanted to add to them later or I just haven't got around to organising them. So if you're starting stamp collecting, it's probably best to have pages where you can add and subtract, as opposed if you start collecting Commonwealth and then you find you've got a lot of one country, not so many, then you can subtract it, pages. It's a, it's a difficult question to answer. That it does depend on personal preference. I would actually go for a stock album like this because you can move the stamps around until you've got a definite idea of how you want to, to display them um, and exactly what you want to display, I think you're better going for a stock album. But once you know exactly what you want, like my Maltese collection, I know exactly how I wanted that displayed and exactly what I wanted. It looks better uh, and, it's, and as you say, you can add pages in and out then. But initially I would go for a stock books. They're, they're very simple easy to use and you, as I said you can slot the pages the stamps in as and when you want further up there's there's these separate countries you know this this album is the whole of this album is just Gibraltar stamps that I've accumulated and as you can see there's lots of duplicates there's there's loads in there um, I slowly get around sorting these out but but with stamps like this the, the King George VI set I will put together a, the whole set rather than just sell them individually. So I'm, I'm waiting till I get a few more, hopefully, and then I can make up some more sets for these to sell. But in, the way I buy, I buy stuff as, is just as and when I can, and sometimes it comes in albums, does present this problem. All this at the top here are empty albums. Um, some of them are... The, the fold back albums like these ones, some of them are um, stock books like these ones. I've accumulated so many, I don't need these, but they're really not worth any money to anybody. By the time you paid in postage, it's not worth trying to sell these. So I'm at a bit of a loss of what to do with these. And, and, and things like this folder, it's full of what they call stock pages. And these are loose pages that you can just slot the stamps in. I have hundreds of these loose pages. And as I said, they'd certainly be useful to someone new, 
But by the time I post, I'm paid, they've paid the postage for it, they can go down to a, a stamp shop and get new. Um, what I would say, if anybody's listening and, and doesn't mind paying the postage, or lives in Spain and would like to come and visit, you're welcome to any of this lot. <laughs> so you're doing a giveaway. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yes. Okay, moving down just, just a few bits. All these boxes are stamps that are on the internet for sale. And they're all on stock cards, like this. Um, index by, um, just pulling one out. They're indexed by a letter, which is the first letter of the country. So B for Bermuda, and a number. This is my own personal number. Um, and I just do it sequentially from, from when I sell. So the first stamps I sold were number 001, going up to wherever I'm up to now. So, um, as I said, all these boxes, so I've got 10 boxes of, of stock cards with stuff that is waiting to be sold. So without giving an advertisement, they basically came from Ikea. So if somebody is thinking about These boxes, yes. <laughs> sorting out that type of thing for and, their stamps. And they perfectly, the, the stock cards fit in them perfectly. So it's an ideal box to uh, to use. And do you know roughly how much those are? I mean, I'm sure it's probably something the Ikea boxes, still the sell. The boxes were less than, te less than a tenner. Right. They weren't expensive. I can't remember how much they were. But they weren't very But the stock enough. cards fit perfectly in those The stock boxes. cards fit perfectly in them, yeah. So that's good. When I have bigger items, I have to use... I've used some folders just for the odd bits where I've got like a whole page of stamps for sale. That won't fit on the stock card, so it, it goes in here. But, um, there's only a few of those. And then as you can see further down um, is all the... App catalogues that I use. Uh, it's about time I've got a new one, a, a new Gibbons catalogue. But uh, So you've got catalogues there which are obviously like books and sort of catalogue type thing. They obviously weigh a ton. Mm -hmm. Are most of these available on the internet now? Can people look at stuff online? Um, the basic ones are the, the what they call the simplified which just tells you one type of stamp is is readily available on the internet yes and and i use the internet for the rest of the world stamps now if you look down at the bottom here these are stanley gibbons whole world simplified album all of this is available on the internet that those books if i had bought those new they would be 399 pound and as you say, they weigh an awful lot. But these ones are from 2006. I haven't bothered renewing. And actually, I bought them from a, a library. Remember the days when libraries had catalogues and books you could go in and look at? These were all from the reference library um, locally that I, I bought second hand. And I really don't use them anymore. They're there for reference, but... If I need to know the prices of anything, I will look on the internet. But this is more, the, 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 the ones I do buy is because my specialist area is Com British Commonwealth. I'll buy the, the up-to-date British Commonwealth album. Catalog. So if we talk about catalogues then, so presumably various postage offices around the world are producing new stamps still. So presumably they then they have to produce a catalogue, whether it's hard copy or whether it's online. So there's new catalogues coming out all the time. But if you're collecting, I don't know, let's say Victorian stamps, for example, that information isn't going to change, but obviously the value will. So the information in an old catalogue is still going to be relevant, but the cost... And how do you get exactly. an up-to-date cost? See. I mean, can you go on Stanley Gibbons and say, okay, well, in my catalogue I bought 10 years ago, it was X, but now it's going to be Y? It, it, it depends on what you're looking at. If it's a specialist item, um, if it's not the basic stamp, then it's difficult to find on the internet. You, you really need to buy a physical catalogue. Um, 
the American catalogue Scots, I believe, are putting theirs on the internet now. Stanley Gibbons have the basic one on the internet, but not any of the specialised catalogues. Although that is beginning to happen with Stanley Gibbons as well. So they are getting there, but at the moment it's still difficult to find the specialist. And by the specialist, I mean ones with maybe different watermarks or slightly different shades of colour and stuff. It's hard to get that on the internet, but but the basic stamp, yes, you can find it on the internet. And and also generally free as well, so it's it's good. So this is all the stuff on this side. As I said, um, this lot is for sorting, this lot is for sale. And there, that's all my catalogues. So it's all ready of a, readily reachable from my um, command center here in the middle. And then going round to the computer side, um, it's basically all stuff I need to post. There's packaging material, there's envelopes, um, there's more packaging material. On this side, there's cellophane wrappers that I keep put the stamps in when I post them. Uh, my trusty magnifying glass, a cricket ball just in case I get bored. <laughs> one of my other loves and here is my next lot of stamps ready I've sorted these out from from my albums into what I think are saleable lots I've now got to scan these in using my scanner over there um, and then put them on the internet with uh, probably eBay ready for sale and let's not mention the microphone for doing the and, oh yes, this, R Dab Stamps podcast. This beast is is the microphone I use for doing the podcasts normally when I'm not doing this type of one. Um, it, it was a little treat we bought ourselves because both Sheila and I do podcasts and uh, it does improve the quality of sound, so it's worth it. Um, so there we are. Oh, just a quick thing on the wall. Um, this shows some of my other interests, but also these postcards are Maltese buses. They produced a set of stamps um, around about the year 2000, I think it was, or 2010. I can't remember the exact year, um, but they produced a set of stamps showing um, these buses, various sort of prices. And to accompany the stamps, they also produced a set of um, postcards. Now. Because I lived in Malta when these buses, when the buses were exactly like this, I had to buy the set of stamps and I had to buy the postcards. So uh, they're up there for display. And then round on the side, I've got um, cigarette cards. Those were my dad's, um, so they mean quite a lot to me. I am also love old cars, so... Um, there, there is, you know, just a, just a reminder and just a bit of interest, and also the, the last bit, uh, again, cigarette cards that were my dad's. These are cricketers of the time of the nineteen thirties, I think it was, um, and as you may have imagined, cricket is another one of my many interests, and I still play. So, there we go. One last thing before we go. Last November I did a podcast about the world's most expensive stamp, which is the one cent magenta, that was bought by Stanley Gibbons. And they sold shares of the stamp to the general public. And I'd just like to show you this, which is a certificate to show that I actually owned one small part of that one cent magenta stamp. So, um, I haven't actually seen the stamp yet, but when I get into London, apparently I'm, I'm going to be able to, so that would be a nice thing to do. So, Pete, just before we finish, can I just say a huge congratulations on the anniversary of Our Dad Stamps and looking forward to more podcasts. Well, thank you very much. I can't believe it's been, it's, it's been going on for a whole year and... Um, once again, thank you to everybody for watching and for keeping an interest in it. So thank you. Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting. 
it's, it's a little bit different and um, I thought I'd do something special for the for the first anniversary but thank you to all of you who have listened to me and uh, keep on watching and see you again in a couple of weeks time thank you for listening to the podcast I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable don't forget you can visit my online stores at eBay and Dell Camp under the name of Our Dad Stamps where I have over 2,000 items for sale. Please join us again in two weeks' time for another edition of Our Dad Stamps podcast.